and welcome to Shady Grove Radio. I'm Dan Loggins, and this is November the 18th of 2020. Hope you're having a great evening. Have you seen the Christmas decorations that are up all around? Some people don't think you ought to celebrate Christmas or get started with Christmas until after Thanksgiving, but and that's a personal choice. I am of the opinion that Christmas is appropriate anytime. And so coming up on Shady Grove Radio, we're going to talk about the Christmas plans coming up at Shady Grove. Also have an update on uh, Pastor Phil's wife, Ann, Ann Kirkman. And as many of you know, she had a stroke back in July, and the recovery has, uh, has been going on since then. But the Lord has answered prayers, and Pastor Phil has a, a, a wonderful update for us. And we'll also get an update from Pastor Todd about the safety at the church regarding the virus and COVID. And as you probably are aware, we had the online service only this past weekend, but coming up, we're expecting to be back into the facility, have the drive-in service, and kind of get back to that to that schedule we had before. So coming up on Shady Grove Radio, stick around and, and get some information and be inspired by Pastor Phil and learn about our upcoming Christmas holiday. Hello, Pastor Phil. Hey, Daniel Loggins. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. Well, how's Ann doing? Ann is doing much better. She's improving slowly every day. And uh, we got a good report uh, last uh, Friday. She had to have a Doppler on her left knee because when she was in the hospital after she had her stroke, they found a blood clot behind her knee. And so they put her on Eliquis, and uh, the the neurologist said that that would help uh, alleviate the stroke or, or take the stroke, you know, the blood clot dissolve it, I should say. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they did a Doppler to see if, if it had worked. And uh, the Lord answered our prayers, and it worked, and the blood clot is now gone. And they called today and told us that they could, uh, or she could, stop taking the Eloquist if she so desired. But she goes back next Monday to see her, her primary care physician, and so she's going to wait to talk to Dr. Timberlake next Monday to see uh, what she recommends, what, what to do about the Eloquist. Well, it sounds like she's making great progress. She is. Uh, she's still doing outpatient therapy at Moses Cone Hospital in Greensboro, and she's uh, uh, now she's able to walk with a cane rather than a walker, but she still uses her walker around the house if she's by herself. But if I'm here with her during the day or at night, uh, she walks with the walker. So that's an improvement. Our goal is to get her where she can walk without any any help or any aids at all. And uh, so with God's help, we can do that. And is the I know you had family and uh, helping give care. Are they still needed there, or how's that gone? They have, uh, of course, you know, they have lives of their own, and they have kind of gone back uh, to their own uh, life. They, they're they here to help when I need them to. But Anne hasn't progressed enough that I'm able now to uh, go back to the work at the church two days a week rather than uh, working from home. I've, I've gone back to the church, and uh, she's able to stay by herself during the day. And uh, so that's the answer to prayer, too. Like I said, she's getting better and better every day. Uh, I, I do go home at lunch, you know, to have lunch with her and, and help her, that kind of thing. But uh, I don't want to leave her for eight hours, you know, straight. But uh, have three to half to four hours at a time, she does fine. Well, it. I mean, that's so exciting to hear that progress because uh... – 
you know, that was, like you said before, that was a very serious stroke she had, right? Yes, it was a massive stroke. And uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, but I'll just, uh, uh, if I haven't, uh, the doctors told us that there was two miracles. The first miracle was that she survived the stroke when she had it. The second one, that she has progressed as far as she has in this shorter period of time. So that's answer, nothing answer, but answer to prayer. And we know that many prayers have gone up. We felt them. And we know that God still answers the prayer, and we believe in the power and the healing of prayer. So don't quit praying and just asking God, because what a mighty God we serve. Absolutely. Was it, Just looking back on these, how, how long ago was, was her stroke? Her stroke was on July the 18th. And, you know, the uh, the hard thing about that is, is she'll always remember that date. And there's two reasons for that. The first reason is that was her mother's birthday. And uh, so, you know, on July the 18th, you know, she, she celebrated her mother's birthday. But also, that is our youngest granddaughter's birthday. She's born on July the 18th. So Anne's always going to remember that date as the day that she had her stroke. And you guys have really seen God move in this, haven't you? Absolutely. He, he's he been with us every step of the way from day one. You know, like I said, when when I noticed, you know, that something wasn't right. And uh, from that point on, he he's just given me a peace that you, you can't understand. You know, usually you think when something really tragic really happens, you fall to pieces or you know, it just tears you apart. I, I got to tell you, Dan, I never felt that. I, I had a, a peace that that I can't explain, and and it's just it's just God's presence, and He just uh, He just kept a calmness and, and a peace that that I, that that's unbelievable. You know, I, like I said, it's just uh, uh, words can't express it. Do you think it's possible for other people to experience that kind of peace in, in a similar situation? You better believe it. You know, if you just trust in God and say, you know, it's out of my hands, God, but, it, you know, but you're bigger than anything that we're going through and bigger than anything that we face, and we put our faith and trust in you, he can give you peace and he can give you a calmness and assurance that no other way in this world can that happen. I know you, you can, anybody listening to this tonight could be worried about something, and we all have things that, that weigh us down and that we're concerned about, but we can turn that over to God like right now and, and experience peace about that. Am I right about that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and I don't mean just a shallow peace. I mean a peace that... You know, that when you put your head on the pillow, that you're able to go to sleep knowing, you know, that God's got it covered with his hand. And and that's what you have to trust in. And, and it's just a, an assurance. It's just a, uh, uh, that the world can't understand. The world can't understand that. But anybody who believes in trusting God knows that all things are possible. And we got to believe that. And, you know, we're mindful of what he just told the disciples. He said, if you have just the faith of a mustard seed, that you can move mountains. So that, you know, how tiny a mustard seed is. And so that's not much faith. But uh, but a little faith in God can do wonders with it if you just let him and trust him. What has the church family meant to you during this time? Oh, Dan, it's unbelievable. You know, the number of cards and uh, phone calls and, and all the things that we have gotten, we've gotten hundreds of calls, uh, uh, cards, I should say, from people for, just praying for Anne and lifting her up. It's unbelievable. And, and uh, what an outpouring of love, but also the phone calls and the word of encouragement, you know, that I got from other pastors and from people in the church to just know that, that they're praying for us. It's just uh, uplifting, and it's just uh, uh, just knowing that people really, truly care. And they do. You know, we, we, sometimes we kind of think that they don't, but people really care. 
I wonder if you would just uh, take a moment and pray right now. I know uh, at Shady Grove, a church of our size, there's people are going through all kinds of battles and problems that we know nothing about. You know, we, we get some of the prayer requests, and we have a group that prays, and I know your Sunday school class prays, and, and other classes do, do too. But I, sometimes I wonder if we're even touching the tip of the iceberg. You know, there's, there's, um, there's a lot going on out there, and I just wonder if you would be, I, I'm sure you would, would be willing to just take a minute or two here and just pray for the, the people in the church, the things we don't even know they're going through. I'd be honored to pray. And you know what you said is so true. We never know what our brother or sister's going through in life. But when you have, you know, three to 400 people in a congregation, there's always somebody that's going through a tough time. And as pastors and and as lay uh, men and women, we don't always know what somebody else is facing. But we can do one thing, and that's pray for each other. So it would be a privilege for me to pray. Well, thank you. Our Heavenly Father, again, we come to you tonight. We come to give you praise and to give you honor for who you are. Lord, tonight as we come into your presence, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts. We just come to lift you up and to exalt you because we know that there's something about the name of Jesus. Lord, there's love, there's peace, there's comfort in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, tonight, and you've told us to pray one for another, to bear one another's burdens. So, Lord, tonight as we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. We pray because, Lord, not only have you commanded us to pray, but we pray because we love our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we are to bear one another's burdens. So, Lord, we don't know what everybody else is going through or what they're facing. But, Lord, I know one thing that they're not facing anything without you being there with them. And we know that you are because your word promises us that you never leave us, nor would you forsake us. God, what a promise that is. And, Lord, it doesn't matter if we're going through the waters, if we're going through the fire. Maybe we're in the, in the, in the valley. Maybe we're on the mountaintop. Lord, I don't know where everybody is, but I do know, Lord, that there are hurts there's burdens, and there's cares. And, Father, tonight we cast them upon you. Lord, you're the King of the kings, and you are the Lord of lords. And, Lord, we tonight we know that you're still on the throne, but you're still in the midst, of in our midst at all times. And, Father, we thank you that you are. Now, Lord, you know the hearts, you know the burdens, and we put our cast them upon you. Because we know tonight that you are the truth, the way, and the life. There is no other way except through you. Lord, the world doesn't have the answers, but we know who does hold the answer. And, Lord, you hold all things in your hands. And, Lord, again, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And your word tells us that if we pray one for another and we believe in our heart, that, Lord, that you will hear our prayers and you will answer and we commit it into your hands, and we ask that your will be done. And again, we give you praise, we give you the honor, and give you the glory. And Lord, we love you more than anything else. Let us be obedient to you. And again, we commit this time into your hands, and to God be the glory. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Phil. Boy, this has been like a, a little personal revival for me here to hear you talk about what God's done for Ann and how it's encouraged you. I just hope you guys have a have a wonderful rest of the evening and, and a great week ahead and give Ann our love, okay? Okay. All and right. we'll talk to you later. Thank you, Dan. Right, see you now. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Hey, Shady Grove. It's your girl, Tanisha, here. I don't know about you, but I am so looking forward to the Christmas season. Soon, our buildings will be filled with beautiful decorations to bring in the warmth of Christmas. Each year, lovely poinsettias that are dedicated in honor or in memory of loved ones are incorporated in our Christmas decor. This year, the Christmas poinsettias will be in six-inch pots 
with red flowers, red bows, and green foil. They're going to be beautiful. So dedicate one today. They are $10 each and throughout the weeks leading up to Christmas, we will post the poinsettia tribute recipients in our emails and service announcements and in a special Christmas bulletin. Just text the word flower to 336-525-5870. Ordering closes this Sunday. So hurry up, go ahead and take out your phone Text the word FLOWER to 336-525-5870 or grab an order form from the Welcome Center this Sunday. With me now is Pastor Todd. Good evening. Hey, Dan. How are you doing? I'm well. I am well. I know a lot of people have questions, and I have a few myself, regarding the church services and what's going on at Shady Grove. I know this past weekend we only did the the online uh, service, the online replay. And I'm sure people are asking, are we ever going to get back into the sanctuary? Are we ever going to have in-person services? What's coming up this weekend? Uh, this weekend, we are uh, planning to go back to our normal schedule, at least normal as far as what we've been doing throughout the fall. Uh, we'll have the drive-in, <clears throat> excuse me, drive-in service at nine o'clock, and then we'll have the in-person service at ten thirty, like we had been doing. You know, with this this uh, individual who had COVID, tested positive, and was on the campus, I thought I personally thought the response of the church and the leadership was was really good. How did all that come about? Who who, uh, ma- who made we, the decisions? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, it was the staff and the board working together uh, that walked through that process. Once we found out that uh, the person had been on campus, they were not at worship service, uh, but they were on campus. And uh, that that week after, and once we found out that they had tested positive, um, a lot of phone calls between me and Scott Crotty and just talking to other staff, you know, tracing down who they had been around. Uh, very thankful they, you know, were not at a worship service. And then uh, so we just traced around who they were around the campus and informed them so that, you know, they could be aware of the situation. Um, and so we've just walked through that. But a lot of the decisions were made uh, by the board and by the staff and working together to try to navigate the best that we can and try to do what's as safe as possible for everyone. I know it's disappointing to cancel the drive-in, to cancel the the um, in-service or the in the service inside the building. I mean, nobody, you can't say that's not disappointing, but we certainly want to keep people safe. Go, going forward, is that a similar process you'll use if somebody attended a service even and then the next day they tested positive? They should let uh, the office know, let you know. Is that right? Yeah, we need to know so that we you know people that they were around. We can contact them, let them know that, uh, you know, because our, our first um, line of defense is finding those that they've had direct contact with. And so that's how we've walked through this process. I mean, it's just kind of the the new reality that we're living in. And then obviously with, um, you know, with cases going up as it's wintertime and, and people are closed in, you know, we just, I think we can do what we're doing safely, but we just have to be smart and um, use some common sense and, um, you know, just be patient with one another and walk through it together. And if I, if I come to church and, I'm there for the in-person service, and then on Monday or Tuesday, I start running temperature. I get tested positive. You're not going to publish my name, you know, on the website mm-hmm. or spread it around. Is that right? No, no, no. We we will not do that. Uh, we will, you know, we have a responsibility to inform people uh, that they've been in contact with somebody. Uh, those that have been in direct contact, but at the same time, we have a responsibility to protect and confidentiality of you know people's health situations. So this is this is an ongoing thing that's going to go through December, January, February, I guess all the way into the spring, maybe the summer. I don't know how long this will last, but it's something that Shady Grove and all the attenders and the members need to to 
keep in the forefront of their mind that we need to be safe. Uh, we need to have make sure there's a notification if somebody comes down with the with the virus, and just keep each other informed. I guess that's part of uh, loving your neighbor. Am I close there? Uh, yes, and that's one of the reasons why you know we, we do the RSVP that helps you know, us know who's at the service, you know, so that if anything were to happen, we could, you know, trace back, you know, the ushers and, and people are doing a good good job of, you know, when they do attendance, not just counting, but knowing who's there in a service. Uh, and, you know, our, our, you know, we have protocols in place and we feel like that those, if we follow those, that we'll be safe. If we you know, wear our mask in and out of of the building. You know, if we don't congregate together, you know, you know, we we get a, in and out of the building as quickly as possible when service is over, and and do the things that you know for most of us over these last few months have become kind of common now, and and kind of what we do anywhere we go. But you know, we need to do those when we're together as the church family as well. Where do you think God is in all of this? Is he trying to teach us a lesson? I know I heard a pastor say one time that every day is a test. Every day is a test as to whether or not we're going to do what God wants us to do in, a, in, in that day. Where do you think God is for this? Well, I think, you know, we do, you know, I think God uses everything to teach us. I'm not saying that God you know, calls virus or anything like that. I don't think that, but I think he uses everything in all situations uh, to teach us lessons. And I think, you know, while we can't control a virus, we can control how we respond to it. We can control our attitude. We can control, you know, how we love one another, how we reach out to one another. I think that's one of the things that you know, we're learning too, is one of the things that's happening in the virus is people are so isolated. And so, you know, now a phone call, a text to one another, it just means so much to just let somebody know you're thinking about them, praying about them. You know, there's obviously, no matter how safe we are, there are people who can't come to church because they're high risk or have situations that, you know, they may be caring for a high risk family member or whatever. So, just to reach out to one another and say, you know what, I just want you to know I'm praying for you, thinking about you. You know, those are the things that, you know, I think God teaches us is how we need one another. Um, you know, when we get isolated from one another, um, you don't realize how quickly you can get lonely. I know we have coming up something really exciting for the holidays. Uh, the anticipation of Christmas seems to be, that's the big deal to me, you know, is all the anticipation and building up. And I understand we have a few, some special things coming up for the holidays. Yeah, we're excited. I, I love Christmas. It's my favorite time of the year. And like I said, <clears throat> just naturally, it builds anticipation and excitement. Um, you know, and I, I think this year more than any year in the past that I can remember, people are just, you know, kind of excited, wanting to turn a page and, and look for something. And, and it's just really, you know, we're going to celebrate Advent. You know, that starts the Sunday after uh, uh, Thanksgiving. We'll be doing the Advent wreath. And that's just a, a time in the history of the church, the, the, the calendar of the church. You know, it literally means that, you know, waiting and, and preparing for the coming Lord. And, you know, we live in a season of Advent all the time as we wait for the second coming of the Lord. But, you know, at Christmas, we really start turning our hearts towards the manger. And so we're, we're you know, just doing things like that, that brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world are starting to focus on the coming Christ. Um, you know, so we'll have the Advent wreath. Uh, Miss Phyllis Kidd's uh, working on decorating the church, and the church is going to be decorated um, you know, I, I told her, you know, I'm, I'm a Clark W. Griswold fan, so as <laughs> loud and as gaudy, you know, that's that's good. So, <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and then, uh, you know, our 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 theme for Advent is going to be hope, um, and just working on that. And the, the messages are are going to kind of center around the hope that Christ brings, and you know, just 
one of the things that God showed me is just started working this way is a lot of times we talk about hope and and it's like, we wish this would happen. You know, we hope the virus goes away. We hope there's a vaccine, but in the Bible, hope is uh, an expression of what God has promised to do. And its strength is built on his faithfulness. And so that's a little bit different than sometimes what we use hope for. And I think that's what we need to be reminded of. Now we have hope uh, because of what God has promised us and because of his faithfulness. And, um, you know, when we find our hope in those things, um, our perception of what's happening around us can change. I think hope is an excellent theme for the Christmas season for Shady Grove. I, I, I just scribbled down just a second uh, as you were talking about that. I wrote down season of hope because it is a season of hope. I wrote star mm-hmm. of hope. You know, we could we yeah. could talk about the star of hope, the journey of hope, the faith yeah. of the of the wise men who spent, a, you know, they took part of their lives and spent that in search of the Messiah. And then the last one I wrote down was startling hope, where where maybe the something the uh, shepherds experienced when the angels appeared, and it was a startling thing, but it inspired hope in them. So that's that is a great yeah. uh, point for Shady Grove and the in the 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 uh, season coming up. And and what about Christmas Eve? Uh, we're planning on doing Christmas Eve. Uh, we're planning on doing kind of like what we do on Sunday morning. We're going to have four o'clock uh, outdoor service, um, you know, for those that want to drive through uh, them and their families. And then uh, we'll have a six o'clock indoor service um, like we have done in the past. So uh, we, we are planning on moving forward with that. And, uh, you know, we're, we're planning on even on the outdoor service, we've gotten battery lit candles for, for an advent wreath. So we're, you know, we're excited and, and ready to celebrate um, what God's going to do this Christmas season. Well, we'll remember it as the COVID Christmas, but I hope we remember it as one of the best Christmases ever because we're counting our blessings and enjoying getting back together and, and celebrating uh, the birth of, of Jesus. And so this will be your very first Christmas at Shady Grove for you and Michelle being our our lead pastor. I wonder if you have any thoughts you could share with us about this this very first Christmas as our pastor this time. Um, Just it's for us, we've, we've been talking already about how you know, it's just so good to be in a church family once again. And I think Christmas in church to me is always one of the the best seasons of the year. And, um, you know, and just feeling that, you know, we have extended family, we have family, but, you know, there, there's just something special about walking through this time of year with a church family and um, getting to, to lead a Christmas Eve service again and just doing some things like that. You know, I'm, I'm really excited about that. And, um, you know, I've just excited about being here. Uh, you know, it's been a, a much more eventful uh, first week than I anticipated, but uh, it has just you know, been. it's been good. Um, it, you, you know, and, you've uh, only, you've only been here a week. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. So, uh, and, um, so I, I, I was here a week, and then we went online a week. So, uh, um, I'm, you know, so I, I've, I've gotten some uh, joking and ribbing about that. You know, how as a district person, I only had one sermon, so I had to take I get a week it. off to get another one together. I so. get it. Well, and, and you did a good job with it. You did a good job with it. <laughs> Todd, we, we appreciate you, and we appreciate Michelle, and we're so glad you're ministering at Shady Grove, and we're looking forward to the Christmas season coming up. Oh, we're excited, too, and looking forward to what the Lord's going to do. That's all for Shady Grove Radio on this Wednesday, November the 18th of 2020. Everyone have a great evening and join us again next week.